Well, we're going to start with doing the glabella lines here. Some people are afraid to do the glabella lines. They hear about necrosis. I mean, there's it's probably a possibility anywhere you go. Um, I think usually with these lines, especially with somebody like this who has lines that are fairly superficial, we're going to stay in the intradermal area. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a 28 gauge, three quarter inch needle here because just the central line especially is fairly long and I don't want a lot of punctures if I can help it. So this is the Juvederm XC with the lidocaine in it. So I just prime my needle by making sure there's no air in it. And then here's a little pinch. And I have my bevel up. And what I'm going to do is just advance it with a little traction and inject integrate as I go forward. Is it hurting much? Not at all. Good. It's a nice change. And then I inject also retrograde as I come back. Now I want to go back down a little bit through that, staying intradermal where there's little resistance. And then we just smooth it out. We can kind of roll it flat too with a cotton tip swab. And I'm using a 30 gauge hyaluronic acid. I don't really want a lot of swelling here or plumping up from a 27 gauge like Juvederm Ultra Plus. I liked to use the hyaluronic acids up here just because if anybody did have any blanching, any increase in tenderness over the first couple of hours, I could go in and dissolve it if I had any worry at all about arterial occlusion. Then I'm going to switch back over to a 30 gauge half inch needle to get the other lines that look a little shorter. This will be a little bit over towards your brow here. And same thing, is stay intradermal as much as I can. Sometimes when these lines are deep, I'll do some perpendicular struts almost to come across underneath them, almost like you do with the deeper nasal labial folds. And here's another little pinch. And I think the glabella lines are pretty straightforward as far as filling them out just directly below the line and as intra in, in the intradermal area or plane as much as possible. And then we'll push it together to see where it wants to gather the most. And a lot of times these are these little creases in between the muscles. And you can mold it so easily against the 
the bone. And I want to get a little farther down, so I'm going to switch back to the 28 gauge. And then just I just go through the same puncture. Is it hurting at all? Mm -mm. Okay. And I just think I can get this spot here a little bit better because when I pull it apart, it still looks a little bit better pulled apart. And these areas usually bruise pretty easily, but they don't last long. So I switched back to my 30 gauge and again, it's to stay intradermal. That's good. So I've bent my needle just so I can get the right angle and stay superficial. And what I do is I'll just use my other two fingers to tent it up. And I go in just above the line. And here's a little pinch. And then I inject antegrade and retrograde. And I'm going to go just below the surface. Try to stay midline because you don't want to accent the width of anybody's nose. And I'm using a 27 gauge hyaluronic acid, which is very moldable. But I like that 
in this area or at the top of the nose because it doesn't move as much as the 30 gauge hyaluronic acids. And I don't want it to move, I don't want it to creep a little bit down the side of the nose. And then what I'll do is put just a little thread across underneath the line itself. And then go ahead and close your eyes for a second. And here I stay intradermal because that line is a crease right at the, at the surface. And I can tell I'm intradermal because it's a little bit of resistance as I advance. So I can see the tip of the needle underneath the skin. And same thing, I inject antigrade and retrograde, partly out of habit. But just a little bit more in. There's a little bit of lidocaine in this, which makes it a little bit more bearable. Good.